Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 11, the decimal expansion of some irrational numbers. So an irrational number is a number that cannot be represented as a fraction or a ratio representation. Irrational numbers are numbers with non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. And irrational numbers include the roots of non-perfect squares. So the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 2 is not a perfect square. The square root of 2 is a decimal. It's 1 point something and it keeps going forever. The square root of 3. The square root of 4 equals 2. So that's not. So square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 2 is irrational. The square root of 3 is irrational. The square root of 4 equals 2, so it's rational. The square root of 5 is irrational. The square root of 6 is irrational. The square root of 7, the square root of 8, the square root of 9 equals 3, so it is rational. Okay? Get the idea? All right, so anyhow. Opening exercise. Place the square root of 28 on a number line. Make a guess as to the first few values of the decimal exp expansion of the square root of 28 and explain your reasoning. So if I take that square root of 28 and place it here, the square root of 0 is 0. 0 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36, so the square root of 28 is going to be in between 5 and 6. But 28 is closer to the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 6 is, or square root of 36 is 6. 28 is closer to 25 than it is 36, so I would approximate it over closer to the 5. So what would be the first few values of the decimal? I might say it would be 5 point, I don't know, 2, 5, something like that. And of course it continues forever and ever and ever. Okay, so with that in mind, now we move on to example 1. It says consider the decimal expansion of square root of 3. Find the first two values of the decimal expansion using the following fact. If c squared is less than 3, and 3 is less than d squared, in other words, 3 is between c squared and d squared, for some positive number c and d, then c is less than the square root of 3, which is less than the square root of d. I'm sorry, with the, just d. c is less than the square root of 3, and the square root of 3 is less than d. Fine. First approximate. Because 1 is less than 3, when 3 is less than 4, we have 1 is less than the square root of 3 is less than 2. So what we did, we took the square root of everything. Square root of 1 is 1, square root of 3 is square root of 3, square root of 4 is 2. So now I know it's between 1 and 2. So now how am I going to approximate? Which one of these are we going to choose? Okay, so first we're going to use trial and error. So maybe we think if Maybe the square root of 3 is between 1.2 and 1.3. So maybe we think it's here. So 1.2 times 1.2 is 1.44. How am I doing that? Square root of 3. If the square root of 3 is between... Okay, yeah, I was doing that right. So this would be the square root of 1.44. And this would be the square root of 1.69. 13 times 13 is 169. So is it between 1.44 and 1.69? Where is the square root of 3? Well, the square root of 3 is more than 1.6, so it's got to be over to the right more. 
So maybe we might choose a value over here. So how about 1.8 and 1.9? Okay, so 1.8 times 1.8 is... Three point two four. So one point eight is the square root of three point two four. Okay, and we have the square root of three. So right there, I don't think it's between one point eight and one point nine. It might be one point eight and one point seven. So then I do one point seven times one point seven. Point eight nine. So now I know that the square root of 3 is between 2.89 and 3.24. So I know the square root of 3 is between 1.7 and 1.8. So my third approximation is going to be spreading this out into 10. So I'm going to make a grid between 1.7 and 1.8. So I do 1. 0, 1.7, 1.7, 1.72, and continue until I get to 1.8. Okay, so now I want to know where is this square root of 3 here? going to end up on this grid down here. So now I need to multiply these numbers by themselves. And a calculator might come in handy here. So if we use trial and error, we're going to be somewhere over here. Okay. So if I say, hey Siri, what's 1.73 squared? 1.73 raised to the second power is 2.9929. Okay, so 1.73 is 2.99. That's really close to 3. Hey Siri, what's 1.74 times 1.74? 1.74 times 1.74 is 3.0276. Okay, so now I know that 3 is between 2.99 and 3.07, so it's really close to 1.73. So I would say that my approximation is right about here. So we're zooming in onto its actual value. Okay, example two. Find the first few places of the decimal expansion of, point two, of square root of 28. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to inequalities for this. So for my first approximation, I know that the square root of 28 is going to be between now, I'm going to write this without the square root symbol. I'm going to write the radicand. 28 is between two perfect squares. And I know it's between 36 and 25. And since it's between 26 and 35, then I know that if I take the square root of them, then the square root of 25, which is 5, is less than the square root of 28 and is less than the square root of 36, which is 6. So I know we're between 5 and 6. So here's my decimal approximation. 28 is closer to 25 than it is to 36. The distance is 3, and the distance here is 8. So I would say I'd be over here around 5.3. Okay, so I would say that the square root of 28 is about 5.3. Okay, so here's the second approximation. We're going out to 100th position. So it's somewhere between 5.23 and 5.22. So we're going to take 5.22 and square it. Hey, Siri, what's 5.22 squared? 5.22 raised to the second power is 27.2484. Okay. Hey Siri, what's 5.23 squared? 
1.23 raised to the second power is 27.3529. Okay, so I know that 28 is not between these two. So, hey Siri, what's 5.24 squared? 5.24 raised to the second power is 27.4576. Okay, so we're still not there. Hey Siri, what's 5.25 squared? 5.25 raised to the second power is 27.5625. Okay, so I'm continuing on there, and I'm trying to find what two points this is between, so it's not down here, it's up higher. So, hey Siri, what's 5.29 squared? 5.29 raised to the second power is 27.9841. Hey Siri, what's 5.3 squared? 5.3 raised to the second power is 28.09. Okay, so now as you can see, 28 is between 27.98 and 28.09. So I know that it's only two one hundredths away from 5.29 and only and it's nine one hundredths away from here. So my approximation now is going to be between 5.29 and 5.30. Now I know it's over here, closer to 5.29. Okay, so now we're going on to the third approximation. So I know it's between 5.29 and 5.30. And as I said before, it's only 2 away from 98, and it's 9 away from 28 on this side. So it's only 2 away from 28. And, and nine one hundredths away from 28 on this side. So I would say it's down here somewhere. That's my approximation, somewhere over here. Okay, so now the numbers are going to get really big. So again, I'm going to use the phone. Hey Siri, what's 5.292 squared? 5.292 raised to the second power is 28.005264. Okay, so just doing that right there, I know that my value is less than 5292, so I don't want to go this way. I want to go to the left. Hey Siri, what's 5.291 squared? 5.291 raised to the second power is 27.994681. Okay, so now here we see that we're only one one hundredth away from 28, and here we're six one hundredths away. So now I know it's between 5.291 and 5.292, but closer to 291. So I'm now I'm zeroing into here. So now we're going to do a fourth approximation. And here we have 5.291 and 5.292, and square root of 28 is in between those. We aren't going to go out any further than that. Okay, exercise one. It says, in which interval of hundredths does the square root of 14 lie? Show your work. So the square root of 14 is less than the square root of 16, but more than the square root of 9. Those are my two perfect squares on each side. So the square root of 14 is between 3 and 4. Okay, so now we have to keep going, and now I have to try to decide if is it 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, or so on. Um, 14 is 2 away from 16 and 5 away from 9, so I would say it's around 7 or 8. So the square root of 14, then we would probably try to um, begin over on the right. So I'm going to start with 3.7. I might have to erase, but I'll start with 3.7. And if I do 3.7 times 3.7, I get 13.41. That's less than 14, obviously. And then if I try 3.8, 8 times 8 is 64.
and we get 14.44. So now I know that 14 is between 3.7 and 3.8 because 14 is between 13.4 and 14.4. Okay. Uh, 14, this is four, hundred, 4 tenths greater than 14, and this is 6 tenths less than, but it's close to equal. So the next one I'm going to check is somewhere around 5, so I'd probably do 3.75 and 3.76. Um, the numbers are getting really big, and I'm not going to do this by hand. Actually, maybe I should. I will. So 3.75 times Okay, so 3.7 times times 3.75 is 14.0625. So 3.75 is not less than, it's greater than. So I need to move this 3.75 to the other side now. And now try 3.74. But you get the idea, so I'll use my phone here. Hey Siri, what's 3.74 squared? 3.74 to the second power is 13.9876. Okay, so 13.9876 is less than square root of 14, and 14.06 is greater than 14. So now we're between 3.74 and 3.75. In which interval of hundreds does square root of 14 lie? And there it is. Okay, that is the end of Lesson 11. Review the lesson summary and go to your problem set.